I'm blue, da ba dee ba da doo. I pressed the button and now I am blue. Man, I wish I was in green team though. Look at this thing. <laughs> that is incredible. Ah, oh, green team has their own clubhouse, guys. Exclusive access to only green team members, and it's amazing. What does blue team have? Blue team has nothing. Ah. Oh. Wish I was green team. They got their own waiting room. Look at this place. Green team waiting room for green button pressers. Hashtag go green. Yeah, no kidding. Green is where you want to be. If we were green members, we could hang out in here and just watch the button and enjoy life. But no, we're a filthy blue. <gasps> Wait a minute. I just remembered. Beef opened up a brand new record store in town here. We got to get over there quickly before he sells out of all the good tunes. Yeah, beefy tunes. Let's check this place out. Oh, man. It's got the chocolate roof. I like it. I like it. The grand piano. <laughs> this thing's actually pretty incredible. Oh, man. Seven dime blocks. Delivery included. That is so tempting. We don't have the space for it right now at our base. we got to work on our base. Um, but, yeah, I think he used iron golem heads to imitate the keys on the keyboard. And it actually looks really close, doesn't it? One diamond per stack. For note blocks, really? That actually seems a little cheap beef. Are you sure? I'm going to buy those, yeah. Because those take so much wood to make. That's actually a really good deal. Uh, let's... Oh, wait, no. We have to use the funny money. Uh, yeah, there we go. Deal of the week. Ten diamonds for a shulker box. That's pretty cool. That's tempting. I think I'm going to leave that for somebody else, though. Because we're really only here for one record. And in my opinion, it is the best record by far, and it is the correct opinion. We got to get ourselves Ward. Ah, he, thankfully he still had some in store. Whew, that was close though. Cool, so we farmed up some materials, and I think we are ready to get started. I thought we'd work on the base a little bit this episode to begin with here. Uh, I don't know if you could tell, probably not, but the base actually feels a bit disorganized to me. So the menus with this, I did do the table of contents trick that was recommended. So instead of just having like infinity written on the first page here and then knock back on the next, we write all the uh, menu items on one page and then we use this little arrow to indicate what page we're on. That way you can see the whole list. I have decided, like I originally liked the trap door flipping every time I scroll through. Uh, now I find it annoying already, <laughs> so we're gonna move this over to here So we got to move the water stream over one block and I think we'll hide some glowstone down here Just so a little bit of light comes through and over top that we'll go for acacia for a bit of color and then the trap door uh, I was trying to figure out how to connect this to the enchanting room, right? We got this bit of a gap here, so figured let's bring this post forward so it lines up with this one and then we will put some orange concrete in because again we used orange concrete over here so we kind of need the wall with it over here and then on the way up here we're gonna have some slabs with some flower pots and some green mixed in okay so that's a pretty simple decision but it actually helps me figure out quite a few things here so i put a piece of acacia just so we sort of blend into this room where we have a whole bunch of it we know this wall is going to be pretty much solid orange, so we should try mix some other details in so it's not so plain. So I was thinking put some bookshelves along here, maybe some slabs over top. So I wanted to add some detail to these big orange walls we had here, and I struggled with it at first. I was trying to make like bookshelves. I don't know if you've seen this before, but people stack trap doors together in a bunch of different ways. Add some items on top, and it looks pretty cool if you do it right. But then I was like, oh yeah, I don't know how to make bookshelves. <laughs> Can't make them look good. I tried a bunch of different uh, things. And then it's like, ah, I'll just put some paintings in. And that made, a, that made a big difference. It just fills up a lot of space, adds a lot of color. And I think that was a good choice. Uh, honey lamps at the top here with the dark oak trap doors in front. Blends in well with the terracotta up there. So that's cool. Okay, so let's figure out how we're gonna do the wall over here now. Uh, we know we got this big orange thing here, so we could either put some blocks in front to change the color uh, to whatever we want. Probably not honey, but something. 
Uh, or we could use the orange wall and have it go in a block here. Maybe some bookshelves up here. Let's do the slab underneath. All right, so again, we did the acacia below like we did over here. We got a little bit of orange showing, not too much. Like we had some orange by the lectern, so I think it makes sense to have it running throughout the base. Uh, we got uh, bookshelves which line up with the ones over here, so it's like they're a continuation. Now I'm looking at this and I don't want three things of dark oak. <laughs> That's way too much. So let's get rid of that. I might make it come out either to here or here. Man, I don't know what to do about this wall. Like, if we put bookshelves here, it's not going to look too good because it's a flat wall. We want the orange showing here, actually. Three blocks up, not just two. The obvious answer is just to push this out another block, but I was hoping to put something here, right? And we're already a little low on space. Maybe we just leave it all orange. Uh, did you guys notice? Is this getting to you? <laughs> we got dark, we got spruce. We got dark, we got spruce. Uh-oh. Uh, I just noticed that. Is that a problem? Should we change it? I don't like how this looks, so let's break this, make it come out a block further, and then attach like that. Yeah, much better. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys noticed, but for this episode, we're going to slow things down a little bit. I'm trying to go more step-by-step -step with you on the decision-making process with the building here. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but we're doing more finicky detail stuff this episode, so I thought it might be better than just going, Oh, look what I did! <laughs> And actually get you guys involved a little bit more. Um, all right, so we'll do that. Now, here's the thing. I was originally thinking about putting mushroom blocks for the floor, but I'm thinking I don't like it, actually. Surprise, surprise. And one of my goals with this base, again, here's a big decision I'm making, is to not just do this color scheme throughout the whole thing. I would like to. Like, this looks good. But I'm challenging myself to try... Yeah change things up, change up the building style, and then we have to try blend it so it all looks good together, which is going to be tricky. So one of the things I thought about, like if we use mushroom blocks, we got to use mushroom blocks all over the place, and they might not go with certain colors and stuff. While if we go for glass for a floor material, that's interesting because it creates a real separation like between this side of the path and this side, which means we're able to transition a lot easier between colors I I think but oh, we gotta, gotta change that because then we'll be able to see it um so I thought that would be a cool idea plus it makes the uh, things a little weird being able to see through the floor I know a lot of people don't like walking on glass but I think if we make the borders clear and we don't make the glass path too wide it'll be okay like maybe just three blocks wide um then we can have another border on this side and it's pretty clear that this is the floor, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. This is what I'm thinking. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. <laughs> we can walk from, from here to here and we don't fall down anymore. We have a floor. Face bamboo. So I was brainstorming some ideas for what we should do for this side of the path now. Because again, we want to move away from this build style, from this color scheme to some other stuff. And uh, came up with a few. One of them involves bamboo. <laughs> Another one involves llamas. All right, here we go. Sandy City, what should we call the baby? Your name is Spitty. We're going to be planting bamboo all along, because I think that might be a cool, cool effect. I've never built with bamboo. Why don't we build with bamboo? I like bamboo. You like bamboo too. Oh, snap. Uh-oh. <laughs> it doesn't look quite as good as I thought it would, to be honest with you. Uh, but we'll try and make it work. I think we can do it. My plan is to make these beams here... Maybe around here, um, and then like they'll start arching over a bit. This is going to go all the way to the other side and connect to these beams here and here. We'll have an opening to get across here. Um, this is where Spitty comes in. He, we're going to build a bridge for Spitty, the Spitty Bridge. All right, so we'll get some slabs. This will all make sense in a, in a second, trust me. Then there'll be some stairs. Like this, and then we're gonna have trap doors running over top of this. You wanna come with me? Yeah, yeah, this way. No, no, no. We got the Speedy Bridge. Speedy, over here. <laughs> no! No! Okay, we gotta drop him in the water. Right? Or, or is this how I get him over here? I don't know. <laughs> come on, Speedy, let's go. Let's go. Come on. 
Speedy, I hate to do this to you, but it's for science. I need to know the answer. Does this kill you when you touch the ground? No, it does. Oh, man. I thought he might have been okay there, but I guess not. Ah. It's okay. Spitty wasn't the brightest of llamas. Now we have... We have witty Spitty. <gasps> no, not again. <laughs> okay. I gotta change up my method. This is not working. I think Spitty was attracted to his parents before, but now I think we're far enough away that witty Spitty is gonna follow me all the way up here. We just gotta keep him going in a straight line. Up to over here. No, 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 no. Oh, careful, witty Spitty. Careful. Here, let's get a couple more blocks down. Let's get him in the minecart. Yes! And good stuff. So it looks like witty Spitty has grown up already, guys, which means we can try this out and, uh, let me try to explain the idea. So this is what we're going to call a spitty bridge or a spitty station. The idea is we can walk across it no problem. Then every once in a while, Spitty's going to come by here, right? And uh, the hope is we run a track all around our base, and he's going to do a big loop. And then uh, we can hop on to take a tour of our base or to get to different areas of it. Although I noticed, <laughs> I think because we're on a server, uh, we take damage. But yeah, the idea is we could hop off at one of these stations and then we're free to walk off no problem, right? He's trying to make me say yes and then he's going to sneak that in. <laughs> uh, no, granite's not the best. Uh -huh. Alright, so I've been doing some testing here. And it seems like it's this block at our head level that's causing the suffocation damage to us. It doesn't hurt Witty Spitty at all, though. Witty Spitty's perfectly fine. It's just us. So we either gotta live with it and take the damage or find something to replace this block that doesn't cause damage. That's like a transparent block, like compost bins. Or tried a few other things, like beehives I thought might look okay and still, still be good. But no, they're a solid block. They don't work. These... Also, we're a solid block, apparently. So we can't use those, and even barrels cause suffocation, I'm pretty sure. I'm not totally sold on it, but we might end up going with the compost bins here. <laughs> Unless you guys have a better idea. We might, we might be able to blend it in better, too, as another option. Um, speaking of blending in, though, speaking of llamas, <laughs> uh, the bamboo here. So the trick, if we want to make this not stand out so much... Uh, is we got to put other blocks similar to bamboo into our base here. Um, so that's basically anything that's green, that's a plant, that's not bamboo. So we could put ferns down here. That won't really do much because that's going to be out of sight, out of mind, more so. But if we really want to make the bamboo work better, we want to add some leaves in. And I was thinking about going over top here. Having a big canopy of them in this middle section. Okay, so I'm still not sure about it. It looks a bit weird to me still, but I feel like it's not as bad now, right? We got the droopy leaves in the middle, um, which I think blends the bamboo in a lot better. It makes it feel more like a jungle base. Added a bit more leafage down below here. And we got this side of the path done as well, which is great, because now Spitty can travel a little bit further <laughs> on his uh, minecart. We don't take any damage with the compost bins now. Uh-huh. So something I've been trying to learn lately, guys, is color theory, and I'm putting it into practice, into experimentation with this base. Now, I can't explain it super well to you guys, but I know, like, this light blue color and this orange are opposites, I believe. So we can use the light blue as an accent color. So that's why these, like, diamond uh, pieces actually kind of look good in this room, because it's the opposite to the orange accent color. Did I get that right? Hopefully. <laughs> So now I've done something similar up here. I've put diamond blocks, quite a bit of them, up here for that light blue color. And we have very little orange on this side now. We have a little bit now that the lamps here, the lanterns, act as the accent to the light blue. Now if we were to put pink in this room, it really doesn't go, right? But now that we're doing a bit of a color shift here, we can put pink here. And I think it actually looks okay. Anyways, let's keep going here. Let's try finish up this build. So I want to put a ceiling over this section as well. And I ran some logs from these beams across here. This one ran into the bamboo. So I'm not sure that's going to work. But this one goes all the way to this arch. 
And I like how it sits on top of it. I think that's a cool, cool look to it. So we'll probably keep that. Um, I'm going to try like mix some honey in over here as well. Something like that. And then I was thinking like when we come out of this enchanting room, it would be cool if we had a bit more of a separation between the two sides. So I want to put an armor stand in this section. Like maybe we'll have more acacia and uh, like something for it to sit on and then we'll have it facing us like that. Oh, snappers. All right, guys, we are getting very close to finish with this now. Um, but man, have I been struggling with this last little bit. So we got our honey roof in, which is all good. I think that's cool. Uh, for these bookshelf nook things we have with the lecterns, I made the roof slope up and connect to the beam that we had running across here. I think that's that was a good idea. I added another beam that goes across here with some acacia trap doors in for some color. Also added acacia up there, some spruce doors on these. Um, I almost think we should change the orange in the back there, but I'm not sure. Something's bothering me about those. I added some dark spruce doors along here. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, but I'm trying it out. And <laughs> I have really been struggling with these middle sections though. Oh man, so originally, like my whole plan from the beginning here was to fill those with randomness. To fill them with like what we did over here, something similar. I think I must have tried like three or four different random block arrangements in this room. Different block pellets, different patterns, and none of them looked good to me. I wasn't happy with any of it, so uh, tore it out and we're going to go for something more structured instead after all. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think what we should do for this little nook, and it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's like a library, right? Maybe this is where you come after you grab your book and you sit down on your couch. We're gonna have a couple couches in here and enjoy your lovely story, right? Maybe someone sits across from you on the couch and you have a conversation with them, but you can't talk in the library. Uh-uh. You gotta use sign language. And we're gonna put a painting, one of the two tall ones, on the signs here. Yeah, that guy's perfect. Now we'll be able to just walk through, get into here if we need to. Let's bring it forward one, and it'll just wrap around. Ah yeah, so we got it totally finished up here now guys. I think this section of the base is complete and man was it a doozy. <laughs> uh, it feels so small for how much time it took to complete it, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it turned out pretty good here. It's got that wacky chaotic element to it. Um, I think I went a little too heavy on the details. Future parts of the base probably won't be as detailed and we'll be able to build them a lot quicker if we keep them simpler but uh, yeah this is the rooms that we got again we can just walk through here to get to the droppers if we need to if there's anything we need to access like let's say I put an item in that I didn't mean to and it goes into the wrong place and just go quickly grab it um yeah so that's all good we got our speedy stations I did add some glass here so you can't just walk on the track and and that sort of thing so it's it's safe <laughs> Uh, a couple sea pickles around the place. Um, yeah, all in all. I got rid of the bell up there just to remove a little bit of detail. I thought it stood out a bit much. We got the enchanting room finished. Now the bamboo. I wanted to try something with the bamboo just to finish this off. So I noticed some of it has these leaves on. And I think that would look a lot better than uh, the straight poles. So I don't know if that's because I grew those later. Or what happened? Why do some of them have the leaves? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the top of them. Uh-huh. So you can see the difference here. Left side has no leaves. Right side has them. And I think the right side looks better to me. Right? Am I crazy? <laughs> so we'll probably change the left side as well. Um, another thing I was thinking, though, is maybe... Maybe we actually want to stop them from growing certain heights. Like if we put string here... Oh, yeah, okay, so that makes a pretty big difference, actually. It keeps more of the leaves at our eye level instead of up higher. You can see the diamond blocks easier now. Yeah, I think we'll keep it like that. Cool, all right, so let's get away from our base for a bit, guys. We'll check out some stuff around the shopping district now. Uh, let's head over to Shady E's first. We built this last episode. See if we've had any business, any action around here. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we got somebody. All right, so again, we're trying to sell subscriptions to a lifetime supply of free glass at the moment. Um, I'm not going to do the drawing today. I'll probably do it in the next episode. Let's see. 
anybody's been interested. Oh, hey, yeah, we got a few people. Quite a few people, actually. XP Crafted, Cub, Hypno, False. That's example. Ijevin, B-Dubs, Zuma, Vintage, Corella, Stress. A lot of people here might be winning free glass for lifetime. Aha, uh -huh. so I went through the comments on last episode as well, and we got a lot of great feedback about what to do with the shop here, so thank you for that, guys. Um, I won't be able to do much with it this episode, but I'll try to do a few things. We'll keep working on it over time, and hopefully it'll start getting better. <laughs> so I think the number one thing that was suggested is that I change this ice sheet into a cloud, which, uh, oh, it scares me a little bit to think about doing that because it's so big. And, like, if I add anything to this, it's going to make it stand out more. But I do think that is a good idea if I can pull it off. I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to because <laughs> it's such a big project. And I'm not really good at organic shapes that don't have strong definition to them, like a cloud. Uh, it's it's hard for me to get my mind about, around something like that. I know I need to mix, like, different types of glass together and, and stuff, but, uh, yeah. For today, I think what we'll just do here, another thing that was suggested is to get rid of the straight edges on this. So I'm going to go around here and try to change it up a bit. You can even see the shadow on the ground there. There's almost a straight line that's visible. We want to get rid of that, make it more organic. Hey, good stuff. So we got that done. It still looks a little bit on the square side but because I only went out like four or five blocks from the edges. But uh, it does look a lot more fluffy now, which is good. And I think when you look at the shadow on the ground, it's a little less obvious where the lines are. So that's what we were aiming for. I think that's okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So I realized I made a giant mistake with this build, guys, that I can't fix now. But I'm going to keep it in mind for future builds. I shouldn't have uh, built this level with the C. <laughs> it's a huge mistake. Because now that I want to do some terraforming on it, it's like, oh, wait a minute. I can't slope it down like the, the ground, I can't slope it towards the water at all. Um, so I'm like forced to keep it flat almost. And it doesn't really make sense to build up the ground. Because if I do that, then it's like we have a, a low spot where the building is. So I'm not too sure what to do about that. <laughs> uh, at the very least, what I'm going to do today is try to get rid of these straight edges with the ground. You see this is like totally straight here. We'll change that up, and then also I just like covered over the water here. I'm going to build out the island so it looks more natural. Although that goes way down. That's going to be tough to do. All right, so check it out here. I think we're doing a little bit better now. There's no super straight edges on the island, and I think... I got it built up well enough now. So the areas where it was going like way down, <laughs> I decided just to concave it, make it go towards the island. So this is all built, what you're looking at here, all this dirt. I placed that um, up until the gravel layer there. So I built that out, built this out over here. And then this is all man placed as well, this stuff here. I grew some grass over top of it so it looks more natural. Um, but if we take a look inside here, yeah, <laughs> uh, I didn't fill it in. I'm, I'm, I'm not the best person. Uh, anyways, let's, uh, I, I give all the other hermits a hard time about not filling in their, their things and then I don't do it myself. <laughs> a little bit of a hypocrite. Uh, uh. But anyways, guys, I think that's going to have to do it for this episode. We're pretty much out of time here for today, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, take care, have a good day, bye-bye.